Did you ever think when you were defending democracies, uh, defending your country, and let's face it, through the Cold War years as well, and through the years of Islamic terrorism, mm -hmm. did you think that democracy in our lands would be at risk from within, which they are right now? Well, over the last, I'd say, 15, 20 years, we've seen this increasing, uh, what many people call tribalism. And basically, you can sum that up with contempt for other people's views and saying, I disagree with you, and by the way, you're wrong about everything. Mm -hmm. I think in the past, we had elections, and yeah, they're pretty, uh, they're pretty raucous, and they're pretty rough and tumble, and sometimes they're not civil, but welcome to democracy. But in the old days, the old days being when I didn't have this color hair, uh, in the old days, when the election was over, we buried the hatchet and we got down to governing. It's like today, all we stay in is locked in this election cycle and we're constantly finding reasons not to cooperate. And no democracy can survive that sort of a, a style. It just won't work. Let me go straight to the heart of the reason, <clears throat> the public reason, that you res resigned. Mm -hmm. It was, and you've published your resignation letter in your book, mm -hmm. it was over Syria. Right. And I know that you blamed President Obama for, quote, unquote, losing Iraq. Well... Did you believe that President Trump was losing Syria and you didn't want to be any part of it? I thought that we needed to maintain an influence in Syria, but I laid this out in the letter uh, explaining why I believed I needed to leave the administration, because I believe strongly in allies. Uh, I think that's our unique strength. When this town was hit on 9-11 back in 2001, within 60 days, I was fighting in Afghanistan. And joining me there were troops from Canada and the United Kingdom, Norway and Germany, uh, Turkey and Jordan, New Zealand and Australia. Now, none of their cities had been attacked. They were there because we were there, because we had been attacked, our values had been attacked. And I think that's what we have to look at. What are the shared values inside our own country we don't talk about those right now. We only talk about what we don't share. What are the shared values among the allied nations? The president said ISIS has been defeated. Are you concerned that, in fact, it's coming back? It, it's not the sort of thing that you defeat, uh, even if you take away the geography they once owned. It's an idea that's got to be defeated. And then that's much stronger, much more difficult, will take longer. <clears throat> General Mattis, you resigned over Syria. You've made your letter public. But there are many, many things that President Trump said and did over the years that potentially rose to the level of unacceptability in the public sphere. Let's just play mm -hmm. some of his sound bites. You also had people that were very fine people on both sides. I have great confidence in my intelligence people, but uh, I will tell you that President Putin was extremely strong and powerful in his denial today. It's working out very nicely, and we're going to have a very, very strict ban, and we're going to have extreme vetting, which we should have had in this country for many years. I was really being tough, and so was he. And we would go back and forth, and then we fell in love, okay? No, really. He wrote me beautiful letters, and they're great letters. We fell in love. So, uh, Secretary Matt, is President Trump opining on a whole load of issues? The last one, we fell in love talking about the North Korean leader. There were many, many reasons, potentially, for somebody such as yourself to resign. Why not over any of these? Christian, uh, if you go into the military, you swear an oath to uphold the Constitution. The elected commander-in-chief is the elected commander-in-chief. But if we're going to protect this democracy, even in, it, in its most raucous moments, even when there are fundamental issues going on, you don't want the Defense Department coming in and saying, we're not going to defend the country today. The th th thousands of young troops, they do not get a chance to say, I'm, I'm going to quit today. So what you do is you protect the institution, you protect the country, you stand up for the Constitution, but what you don't do is get engaged in the political fray, the day by day, especially right now when it's so corrosive. You don't get involved in that and wonder why the country is now vulnerable because you've allowed the troops to be distracted. Abraham Lincoln in 1865, early 1865, uh, the war is still going on. The country is tired of it. There has just been an election. 
Uh, I don't think the votes are even all counted yet because it takes months to get the, the full count. He sends a one-sentence letter, telegram actually, to General Ulysses Grant. He says, let nothing that is happening, I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, let nothing that is happening in the political realm disrupt, delay your military operations. In other words, keep your head focused on defending the country. I'll take care of the politics. That is the tradition from Abraham Lincoln to now that the U.S. military uh, stands by. And by the way, all those young men and women who raise their right hand, all volunteers, and rally to the flag and give you and I and all the rest of us here a blank check, payable with their own lives, to uphold the Constitution, they're the people you stay focused on when you're dealing with the defense of the country. I spent 45 years in uniform or as the Secretary of Defense, and that's where I stand. You talked about right after 9-11, you were within days fighting in Afghanistan with a huge coalition. Yes. Right now, as you know, the United States is involved in talks with the Taliban, who the United States coalition defeated mm -hmm. back in 2001, and defeated Al-Qaeda as well, and sent them packing. They have remained a very, very strong force, mm -hmm. and they seem to be calling the shots right now, the Taliban, and the United yeah. States is talking about the president withdrawing all U.S. troops. What is your military analysis of whether all U.S. troops mm -hmm. should be withdrawn from Afghanistan, and do you believe that yeah. it will become again a terrorist hotbed? You know, I, I prefer having parted from the administration over matters of policy, a, a disagreement, and I laid those out in the letter. I think uh, that what I now occupy are what I call the cheap seats. I'm not responsible, so I can sit on the outside. Uh, and frankly, it, it frustrates me sometimes to see people who speak so authoritatively mm -hmm. when they don't know the back channel things going on and when they have no responsibility for the outcome. So uh, the French call it a devoir de reserve, Christian, where you have a duty to be a quiet. Uh, the president, the secretary of state, the secretary of defense, uh, they have big responsibilities right now. And I don't believe that, uh, that I add anything to it by representing... Uh, contrary views or something like this. There'll come a time when it's right for me to talk about strategy and policy. When might that happen? I will know it when I see it. But will it be before the next election? Uh, I, I can't say that. But you talk about a duty. You're a <clears throat> military man. Duty and honor are very important in your life and in your career. Do you believe it's your duty to speak about what you know from the inside before the next election. Well, duty and honor absolutely uh, are important, and you don't surrender your oath to support and defend the Constitution uh, when you leave active duty. But that said, uh, I, I don't think right now for a person steeped in the military tradition in the Defense Department uh, that I should be speaking up on things that are political assessments. Why Except do I, for, but, I'm, asking, well, I'm asking you a military assessment. I asked you about right. uh, the military assessment of what's on the battlefield in Afghanistan, something you know really well from mm -hmm. fighting and then from being Secretary of Defense. I, I may speak to about, about the military, strategic, even policy uh, at some point. I just owe a time when I don't walk out and start talking. I laid out why I left. Mm -hmm. Now it's time for those responsible who have got grave responsibilities. Christian, this is not a simple war right now. It's complex. Yes, it is. And we America's need to... longest war. You're right, absolutely. But here's the thing, Mr. Secretary. We are in a state where we've just discussed the, uh, the, 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 the damage being done to our democracies, the damage being done to our alliances, the mm -hmm. damage being, uh, being done to global strategic American-led norms since mm -hmm. World War II. And many are asking, because many had so much and have so much respect for you. At what point does somebody like yourself decide that patriotism is about your country and not just about yourself or about the military code? At what point yeah. do you owe mm -hmm. it to the people of the United States of America to talk the truth about what's happening, let's say, in the battlefield, what's, what's happening mm -hmm. in decision-making, as far as you yeah. know it. Well, Christian, I'm, I'm not trying to frustrate you here. Uh, I think I have led a somewhat patriotic life over uh, decades of service to the country and to the values we stand for. But it is a long-standing tradition, 200 years of tradition, more than 200, 
that military people do not pass political assessments on. Look at what happened where the U.S. Congress, House and Senate, Republicans and Democrats, 87 percent vote for the defense budget, and it was a record-breaking budget that President Trump proposed to rebuild the military. That shows why we need to keep the defense of our country apolitical. You do not want it to become, and there's just been another issue about politicizing a security relationship with another country. Once you politicize it, then Katie bar the door. People start choosing sides based on politics. The defense of the country does not rest on politics. That is not a partisan issue. That's a nonpartisan issue. I should not take political assessments no, nor did Secretary Carter, my predecessor, about politicians. I'm not going to do that.